Good day everyone, my name is Mark Darn Vidal from section BSC 1-10 and I'm the reporter number one who will discuss the biosocial and evolutionary theory. But first we will discuss the biosocial theory. As you can see in the picture, there is Cesar Lombroso. So, according to New World Encyclopedia, Cesar Lombroso argues that criminality can be inherited and those persons or criminals who have physical defects can be identified as a born criminal. Also, uh, the concept of Cesar Lombroso about the atavism or atavistic stigmata that studies and investigates the skulls and facial features of a criminal. Therefore, Cesar Lombroso uses biological causes to biological causes that physiological factors are inter are have interconnection towards criminality. However, uh, Cesar Lombroso's concepts or ideas are unreliable nowadays due to not all criminals have a physical defects. But there are still many theorists. Uh, researchers and criminologists are using his ideas and concepts to explain criminality. And now let us proceed to biosocial theory. So when we say biosocial theory, according, according to H.L. Berger and Barnes, biosocial theory it is the idea that biological and environmental factors are related to antisocial behavior and also all factors that related to etiology of antisocial behavior meaning uh, the genetic biological and neurological factors are in combination with environmental influences such as socialization and um, exposure to poverty and etc etc in other words by social theory it is it includes the effects of genetic physiological and neurological factors as well as the influences of the society and family in contribution or in the causes of antisocial behavior. Now let us proceed under this biosocial theory which is the behavioral genetics. It is the study that aims to unpack the genetic and environmental influences on the human behavioral outcome. Now to further explain this we have the heritability. So heritability it estimates allow one to estimate whether and how much genetic variance in the population that contributes to the behavioral variance in the population. However, heritability that does not literally tell us how much genetic factors can influence the uh, human behavior. Now let us proceed to the shared environment. When you say shared environment, it, it taps the environmental influences through the process of socialization. It, so, it makes the siblings to become more similar to one another. Therefore, shared environments, these are the interaction between people for a very long period of time in the same household, neighborhood, and school. Now let us proceed to the next which is the non-shared environment. It is the opposite of shared environment. It is because it makes the siblings to become more different from one another. Furthermore, non-shared environment are often comprised of environments that came outside of the home or the household and this was called uh, differential association 
When we say differential association, the criminal behavior can be acquired through socialization, where the individual can learn the can learn the behavior, the attitudes, the knowledge, and the activities of an antisocial be an antisocial person. Now, this person can also be uh, can adapt the activities of the antisocial person through his uh, daily activities. Now, we have the researches under the biosocial theory. According to Worley, 2016, we have the nutritional deficiencies. In here, researchers suggest that improving the um, diet quality can reduce the delinquency of a person and also uh, it can improve the academic performance of a of an individual therefore if a person has a poor diet quality it can increase the probability of delinquency now there's also a studies that indicate uh, deficiencies in potassium, potassium, calcium, amino acids, and etc. can lead to depression, mania, and cognitive problems. Hence, these mental health issues can significantly increase the probability of having a violent behavior. Now, next research is about hormonal influences. Many bisocial theorists are currently exploring the, uh, the relationship between hormone levels and violent behavior. In fact, several studies have produced findings that persons who has abnormally high androgen levels are in fact correlated with aggressive behavior. Therefore, researchers in this theory indicate that there is a moderately strong relationship between hormone levels and violence. However, a vast majority of males with high testosterone levels have never engaged in such serious crime. Now next, we have the genetics and violence now this is about the x y y chromosomes so many researchers believe that males with x y y chromosomes are more aggressive than males with normal uh, chromosomes and these males with x y y chromosomes are often engaged in serious violence therefore this led to the suggestion that XYY males should be identified at birth and should be thoroughly examined and monitored to prevent violence. However, researchers eventually found out that most of the violent offenders, including the serial killers, do not have an extra Y chromosome. And now, to end this topic, many bi biosocial theorists faced a number of criticism because of their uh, fraught with uh, methodological problems and also some of biosocial criminologists has been accused of racial and class bias. Now, let us proceed to evolutionary theory. As you can see, we all know that Charles Darwin is a, pro, is a famous proponent of theory of human evolution. But in criminology, we also have theory of evolution, and that is evolutionary theory. 
when you say evolutionary theory, it is the concept that behavior, a certain behavior can be passed down from one generation to another. Like for example, aggressive behavior. No. Uh, a person with aggressive behavior, when this person have intercourse, have an intercourse with a female, and this female became pregnant, there's a probability that aggressive behavior can be passed down from the child. Furthermore, uh, evolutionary theory has been often used to explain the different the, the gender difference in both violent behavior and sexual activity and also according to evolutionary theorists in order to ensure the legacy of a person it is advantageous for males to have mate with many females as possible. Now let us proceed to the research which, which is the evolution and violence. Experts in this field believe that as human beings evolve there's a certain trait that there, there's a certain trait emotion and characteristics became genetically ingrained. Like, for example, uh, jealousy. It is a human emotion that, that can be evolved in order to keep their families together. And that is the reason of increasing the probability of reproduction. Now, lastly, we have the gene-based evolutionary theory. It aims to look at the specific type of crimes, such as spousal abuse and child neglect, as well as the general acts of a criminal and antisocial behavior. It also asserts that sexual aggression is naturally selected to be exhibited predominantly by the sex that will invest the offspring and virtually every species that is the male in evolutionary pers in evolutionary perspective it argues that men are free from parenting responsibilities so they have the they have biologically more to gain by having a multiple sex partners and they acquire sex partners either by pushiness or force now these genes uh, now this gene gets passed on because it has a higher reproduction rate now that's it for evolutionary theory. To conclude, when you say biosocial bi theory, it includes the genetic, physiological, and neurological factors as well as the influences of the society and the family in the causes of antisocial behavior. When we say uh, evolutionary theory, it is the idea that a certain trait can be passed down from one generation to another to true uh, reproduction now to end this discussion again my name is mark darn vidad from section bsc 1-10 thank you very much and god bless you all